our short time together, I want to give you a feel for what we are about at SAS. And, and obviously, given 30 minutes that includes questions, it's going to be a very high level feel. So I know as part of the pre-work, you were able to watch or you had an opportunity to watch the Power to Know video. Um, how'd you like it? I still get chills every time I see that. Um, and, you know, at least we had it in here just in case, because sometimes, at least with our leaders that we work with at SAS, we give pre-work and then we say, did you do your pre-work and the eyes go down and the papers start to shuffle and it's like, okay, so yeah, let's do the pre-work now. You guys didn't do that, so we're going to not worry about that, that video. But the Power to Know video, I think in that two minute segment, really gives a feel for the energy that SAS has internally and the energy that we want to give to our customers and I think it's probably part of the reason that our customers continue to do business with us and that our employees choose to stay with us as long as, as they do. So give you a feel around what we're about, the culture, how do we go about acquiring talent, what do we do to develop it, and then really, again, really high level, what are some of the key things we think about for retention? And then we'll just sort of wrap that up with the key, key takeaways, the nice summary, and then there'll be time for questions. However, let me say, if you have a burning question, don't hesitate to ask it. I'll do my very best with time management. This is where I probably shouldn't have said that because then it just explodes, <laughs> potentially. Or if you just have a question and you're thinking about, oh, I don't know if I want to ask it yet, just jot it down because we don't want to lose um, any, any comments or questions that we can offer up to you. Um, and we see this as you know, a collaboration because I'll start out by saying we don't have it all right. We know we don't. But I think that that's what keeps us thriving and desiring to get better and learn more. So we don't want to rest on our laurels because we don't have that right. There are, there are all a, lot, a lot of other companies out there doing things that we wish we could do. But then we think about what can we take away from that and bring into SAS that would make it work in our environment and, and help us take that one step forward. So this is very true for us. I bet it's true for each one of you in your worlds too. You can change the industry. But things are changing. We know things are changing. For us, there's always new technology. So what does that mean from a talent standpoint? It means that we are constantly having to retool our current talent and find talent that is very much steeped in where technology is going. So there is that constant influx of learning and how do we keep above or on top of it and potentially above the, ahead of the curve a bit. There's fierce competition. So, you know, just the, the state of the, the world these days, the state of the economy, now that things are starting to take, take a turn and come back, whereas it'd be very easy to get key talent because there weren't places that were hiring, now that's all starting to change. So key talent, that best talent out there is taking a very stern look at where can I add value and what's going to be the best home for, for me. And so for us at SAS, it's about how do we continue to keep that value proposition something that is of value to potential talent. And then the constant changing demographics. So, you know, we all know it's, it's, it's that many times the world is getting smaller. Um, what used to be, you know, we couldn't connect because you have to fly here, fly there. Everything happens with the internet in a split second. And the merging of cultures and the merging of all those different styles adds complexity and it adds diversity. And each of those times you can take a look at it as, ooh, this is gonna be a challenge. Or you can flip it to say, here's an opportunity. And how can we leverage the opportunity? And how can we you know, really take the richness and the new learning, the new insights that come from the complexity and the diversity so that we can become a stronger company? Here's just a kind of a picture of where we were versus where we are. And that itty bitty, oh, it's actually cut off. Um, we have our, and this will be the only thing that I say that you know, potentially could get me fired. We have our roots at North Carolina State University. My roots are a little bit further west at a lighter blue University of North Carolina. But SAS's roots 
started, we started at university, uh, NC State University, just down the road in Raleigh. And we started as a grant for the agricultural industry. And after a couple of years, Dr. Goodnight and the other uh, three founders decided to take it off of the state's campus. And we went and located here on Hillsborough Street. If you take a look at the picture in the car, you might be trying to figure out, yeah, the 70s, early 70s. So this was us, early 70s. This is us now, 900 <coughs> acres later. So where you are right now is part of SAS campus, um, 900 acre campus, 250 of which have buildings on them. And it's exciting to see the growth, and you can see you know, the, just the contrast between these two pictures. But again, I think it's another example of that, that desire to, to do more, to think differently, how can we show up differently, and even the evolution of, of where we work here in our headquarters, our world headquarters here in Cary, has changed over the years. So Tim mentioned two longtime employees. I'm, I'm young in years compared to Lisa at SAS. We're very similar in age, but I've only been here almost 22 years and Lisa's got me by a nice big handful and then some. So in that history, just seeing where you're seated right now used to be buildings on the SAS campus. So just again, how do we flex change and morph with the times and, and what's needed with the times? This is a note to the external validation that we get. So, you know, we feel like we're doing the right things internally. We feel inspired to do work. But when we get the external validation, it, it lets us know that, yes, we're known for our software. We're known for our anal analytics. And the Gartner magic quadrant shows us all the way up there in that top right. We'd like to continue the, the, the path to get closer to that very top right corner. So we get the validation for the technology, but what we appreciate most is that it's balanced with the validation for what we're doing internally with the employees. So it becomes really a, a very balanced relationship. We could put all the energy into taking all the intelligence out of people's minds so that they're programming and coming up with, with software that is cutting edge, which it is, and we didn't need to think about what happens to help that engine hum, keep that engine in tune. But what we do is we really want to make sure that we're taking care of the internal engine. And that's what all of the best places to work, the multinational awards are about. And we're very proud of those, as is Dr. Goodnight. This is where we're rooted. And that is in the SAS values. There are five of them. You can see them here. Although the screen is cut, I apologize for that. We are approachable. We strive to be approachable. We strive to be customer driven, innovative, swift and agile, and trustworthy. So at the heart and soul of any SAS employee, these are the values that we are looking to show up. These are the values that we are looking to cultivate. Because out of those values, it's amazing what can happen. And in the past 39 years of SAS, it's amazing what has happened. But values are not enough. So really, it's teaming those values with a leadership philosophy that allows the values to thrive. So the leadership, our guiding principles with our leaders, is the idea of mutual respect. So we don't have a really heavy, top-down approach. We all know who's head of the company, and you know who you report to, but as a, a, a big corporate company, we're not real hierarchical. In fact, it isn't, and nothing is thought of if you went to talk to your boss's boss. If you wanted to, you could go into Dr. Goodnight's office. The door's open. So that, that open communication, that idea of mutual respect very much teamed with empowerment. When you're working at SAS, you are given the freedom to do what you need to do in order to get the job done. There aren't a bunch of, we have policies, we need them, but they're, they're not stuff that 
binds you down and, and straps you down to the point where you're thinking, I, I really would like to do this, but I don't think that I know how to do it. Or I can't do it because somebody's going to tell me no. Because of that, we want a, a focus on results. Because at the end of the day, you know, we could get the external validation and say the software is top notch, and wow, they're having a great time at SAS. It's like, you know, happy times in there. But we've got to produce. So really, that whole system has got to be working, because if we're not producing, then it, you know, we could all be a new perk someday having a good time. And the other piece that I think, and, and Tim mentioned it even in his introduction, is that life outside of SAS, that idea of balance. Because when, when people come into work every day, they have their other life that they're temporarily leaving behind. And we want to be able to allow employees, give them the environment to maximize when they're at work so they can also maximize when they're not at work. And, and how to figure out that balance as well. I think those values, the idea of those guiding principles with leadership really culminate in what we call our employee value proposition. And that is the idea of meaningful work and empowerment and environment. So uh, Dr. Goodnight about 10 years ago did a, an article in the Harvard Business Review with Richard Florida. And it was on, man, the title was Managing for Creativity. And the, the question became, you know, what are you doing here? What, what insights would you give to other leaders around what's going on at SACS? And one of the key things that he talked about is it becomes really important to stimulate minds. You guys are in that field. How do you continue to stimulate that mind? Because he can't do it all for us. Our senior leadership team can't do it for our around 14,000 strong staff. It's about how do you bring each person in and be that catalyst, turn something on or continue to ignite something in someone so that they're bringing their full and best every single day. So that's what we're thinking about in terms of meaningful work and empowerment. We want people to be doing stuff that they are just jazzed about. Granted, there's going to be a part of the job that's not so you know, great because that's what comes. You know, the, the things that I have to, for me, the detail orientation work. Okay, you see, sit down and do all your forms. You might as well pull my teeth out. But I will sit there and do it because I know once that's done, I can get back to the stuff that just charges me up. So that's the meaningful work. I, might, I mentioned earlier that idea of empowerment. Again, it isn't about what generally doesn't happen at SAS, maybe somewhat to a fault, is going into your manager's office and your manager says, here's what your work looks like. Here are all of your expectations. Here are the tasks of which that you need to accomplish. Here is your timeline that you need to accomplish them. What is more true is, here's the job. Here's the result. Here are some, maybe some boundaries that we have. What are your thoughts? Get going. How can I support you? And then the environment around not only the, the conversations with the boss of that, that sense of freedom and really inspiring what, what skill and ability every SAS employee brings every day, but also the environment that is aesthetically pleasing. So you come in and you're just inspired because you see, if you're here in Cary, you see lots of green. I said earlier, you know, our roots are at North Carolina State University. We refer to this place as a campus. We are very much rooted in academia. That's, you know, pretty much cause and effect. Professors who started the company. But it feels very, it, you drive onto the campus and it inspires you. And it's not only the headquarters, you know, some people might say, well, that's because it's the world headquarters. If you take a look at pretty much any of our sites across the world, they are reminiscent of this in some way, while at the same time reflecting the culture of the country, the city, wherever they might be located, but bringing that back into the SAS family. So we can create an environment, we can have strong leadership, but how do we keep SAS moving forward? It's about how we bring in the right talent. And we take a three-pronged approach to that. 
First of all, we're, we're looking at folks before they even graduate from university. How can we work with them in the fields that technology, in, in math and science, all the STEM things, how can we work with them, potentially have them come through one of our student programs, work with us during the summer, work with us during the year as a student to learn from them, then learn from us. So it starts young, we start young. We also are taking a look at the, the young professionals. So who are the folks who are just graduated, maybe been in the, the work world for one, two years? And how do we bring them in and really take, um, take a, a firm look for development to give them what they're needed, needing to get that career started and launched and, and potentially sped up? And we have three primary career programs or SAS academies that we're running right now for our sales folks, for our technology folks, as well as for our technical support folks. And when you take a look at our company, those are the three primary areas that um, we have the most need for talent in. And then we also are looking at seasoned professionals. So when we're hiring and thinking about not only the now of what we need, but into the future, we use this three-pronged approach. So we know we want to go and grab those seasoned professionals, the folks who are top-notch and been out there and know the world. But we don't want to forget about where we can be bringing talent in the funnel in these two other areas as well. The other piece that I think is key, and I don't think it's revolutionary, it's just key for SAS, is when we're acquiring folks, when we're bringing them on as SAS employees, we're looking not only for the skill that they're bringing, but we're looking to see does it feel like it's going to be a cultural match? Because the one thing that we're not going to let go of is our culture. We'll take a look at the culture and think about how it needs to maybe flex and bend according to the times. But the culture is our anchor. And it's what's kept us strong for 39 years. And it's what's going to tether us as we move forward when it can get crazy and who knows what's coming around the bend. It's not hold strong for the sake of holding strong, but hold that anchor, hold that rooting, so that you know what do you need to flex and bend so that you can be resilient into the future. So it is that blend of skill and cultural fit so that we can continue to build that culture. And, and this is just a, an example of Chuck, who's been with SAS for, for 23 years. What struck him most as he was remembering his interview when he first came on to SAS was that he's a technical professional. It wasn't only about digging into the technical expertise. It was about who are you? <coughs> about who you are as a person, because that's the future. If we go back to that one of those initial slides, we look just for the skill, we know the skill's gonna change. We want to know that we've got the sort of the right ingredients there to work with to help the company move forward and be successful. And then it's also about the welcome experience. And, and Lisa uses this example, you know, if you're when you're planning a party and you're getting ready for your guests to arrive, you're thinking about everything you want to have prepared, done, so that when they come in. It's a welcoming experience. And so if you look on this left-hand column, it's about when they come in, their office is set up. One of the other things about SAS is that employees each have an office. It isn't just sort of a one flat area with cubicles and things like that. There is this space. The space is intentional because it creates that environment for innovation, the ability to think, the ability to do the work that folks need to do, which is coming out of their heads and again, inspiring them to do their very best work. There are welcome letters, or welcome notes, welcome phone calls, the manager contacting the, the about to start employee so it doesn't feel like you're coming in cold. But really paving that path so that it isn't this, 
oh, I'm getting ready to start day one. We've all been there, day one somewhere. And you know, the butterflies are hopefully in some kind of alignment as they're flying in your stomach, sometimes not so much. They're you know, bing, bing, bing. You have this stiffness about your shoulders. Your breathing isn't as normal as it would be. But we want to create an environment where all that just relaxes. Because we all know the brain works best when all this other stuff is relaxed. It's getting the oxygen that it needs. Um, people are able to smile, and that triggers all kinds of positive adrenaline and things that, that help people think better. So whatever we can do to create that first day experience, that first week experience that isn't like, oh, I've got to cross this major portal, but rather I can just come on, walk it in, comfortable as can be. One thing that I think if you went around and asked any employee at SAS and said, you know, what makes the place special for you? What makes this place special for you? More often than not, I think the word that you will hear is relationships. It's about the people, the connections that you make. We refer to our staff, all employees at SAS, as the SAS family. So if we go back to this, this party scenario when, when you're throwing that party, you know those folks in your life who you invite them, and it's sort of that guest, you know, they're coming in as a guest, but they lose family. And so that's really the, the environment here at SAS. It's about, yeah, you're coming in as a new employee, but we want to shorten the amount of time that it doesn't feel like employer-employee relationship, but I'm a part of this place. I am SAS, I'm a part of SAS. So, once we acquire talent, once we bring talent in, it becomes important to think about what we need to do to help them be most successful. What do we need to do for each of us to be most successful in this, this world that we spend a good portion of our lives in? And you may be familiar with Carol Dweck, um, researcher out on the West Coast. The whole idea of fixed versus growth mindset. We really ascribe to the growth mindset. So if we didn't, you know, it really wouldn't make much sense to think about how we can learn more and do more. We're not finished. I said earlier, we don't have it down. We don't have it perfect. We've got some things going that are right, but we're always out there being curious. What are other places doing? Whether it's a corporation, whether it's a nonprofit, what are other places doing that really help to build that connection of, of people doing their very best work? whatever that very best work might be. So that all plays into that whole idea of a growth mindset. We can learn more, we can continue to do more. In terms of our formal development, it's very decentralized. So this is a screen capture from our SAS, uh, SAS internet. And you'll see that we do have formal development. Oftentimes it's very much specific to the functional area that you're in, so there is specific training that goes to our sales folks because, again, in order to be effective selling at SAS, there are some prescribed skills, some, some prescribed knowledge that we want you to have. And also in the technical field, if you're helping to support our customers, either from an education standpoint, consulting standpoint, important that you know the SaaS software and the solutions and all of those kinds of things. Even in leadership, in the area that, that I work in, there are certain things that we want our managers and leaders to know and do. In fact, oftentimes when we're kicking things off, we say, for adults, it's much more about reminder than it is about instruction. And it's amazing you know, the calmness that will then go through the room or through the call. We're not there to teach you. We're here to help remind you. You guys did all the teaching before that. So we're just, you know, really relying on whatever they came into the, the company with and how can we trigger that again? How can we uncover and dust things off so that people can get back in tune and in touch with the things that they learned long ago or experienced two days ago, but for whatever reason, in the moment when it gets chaotic, you forget. 
So how do we, in leadership, bring those behaviors to the forefront so you can model the very things that you say you want to do, you actually do them. And then just general employee and family developments, we have a group that handles that as well. So it is a very decentralized nature to development. But what I think it also does is it allows the flexibility for when we need to come together because there is some um, new thing coming down the pike, how can we be swift and agile, one of our values, to pull together the developments that is needed to bring people up to speed or bring people to the level of knowledge and skill that they need in order to be successful. And when we want to shift gears in terms of retaining, one of the key things with retaining is we want to create that, you know, one of the, the leadership philosophies, guiding principles was around life outside of work. When we look at retaining employees, it's about the holistic approach. How do we help support our employees so when they're at work, they can stay focused on the work that they need to do? because there's always some other things, a lot of times in these areas, that get their brains going in different directions. So how can we provide resource or service to help folks stay focused at work when they're at work, and then also be able to transition easily into outside of work and be there with your family, your friends, um, your career, your life outside of SAS but maintaining that balance. And so many of the services that, that show up in these areas are meant to be there to help maintain that balance, to get rid of things that sometimes can be distractions, and they don't need to be distractions. And then the other piece in terms of retaining is, it goes back to the values. So if you take a look at that picture at the top left, that is, uh, one, it's called the Employee Excellence, the CEO Excellence Award. And those employees are chosen on an annual basis. I'd say it's probably one of the most prestigious awards here at SAS because it is peer nominated. And it's peer nominated based on the five values that I showed you at the top of when we started talking, when I started talking. So it isn't about my manager nominating me and what can happen a lot of times with uh, employee appreciation programs, sometimes they can get stale. We're fortunate this hasn't gotten stale. This is very much, and it's for around the world, so we're bringing our staff to get nominated and then, then selected back to Cary for an event in the summer where they all come together. But again, it's based on the peers, the peers seeing their, their employees, their um, colleagues really demonstrating the core values of SAS and sharing how they see that happening. So one of the things in terms of retaining talent is we reward the values that are so very important to us because that's what helps to keep those values alive. Um, it also helps to spur energy from, from other colleagues when you see how somebody is working with this customer or working with this team that they're not necessarily, that's not what they need to do or have to do or slated on their job description to do, but they're doing it because that's going to help the work be better. That's going to help the work or the solution provided to the customer be more solid. We celebrate together. So celebration is a big thing at SAS, and it's not always formal stuff. Just that whole idea of noticing the moments and spending that time saying thank you or, or spending that time coming together and connecting. Um, today's St. Patrick's Day. I guarantee you in one of our ca ca uh, cafeterias on campus, there will be things that are very much associated with St. Patrick's Day. You know, and we're all adults, but it's fun. It comes back to that. It, it, it celebrates that kid inside of us all, that, that thing that sometimes gets starved for attention and energy. But yet at the same time, when it's noticed and when it's stroked, even in the smallest ways, it, it brings that energy and that life back to people. So we celebrate, this is a picture of our, our SAS, uh, our spring celebration typically happens around the first part of May. We build team together. 
So one of the, the key things with this slide in terms of retention is how do you build that connection? Earlier I mentioned that one of the, if you ask most employees what do they appreciate most about SAS, most often that, that word that's going to come up is the relationships. This slide is really a salute to the relationship. So here is just a quick team building activity. You've got cardboard and duct tape. You must build a boat. You must choose a captain. The boat is then going to be thrown into the pool and the team that wins is whose captain in said boat makes it across the pool without sinking. <laughs> It's, it's amazing. You get some of those, those technical engineers in there, and man, it's no longer cardboard and duct tape. You might as well, you know, it's like rocket science. So we also spend time communicating. So this is just a screenshot of our internal internet, um, the SAS Wide Web. There is communication, just like when I said, we, you know, we're, we're not really high formal hierarchy. You're going to have Dr. Goodnight commenting. Um, you can't really see it here, but a couple years ago, there was uh, somebody that was worried, oh, SAS is being shocked, you know, who's going to buy SAS, who's going to buy SAS? And Goodnight responded, if you know somebody out there, I've heard somebody shocking the company. If you know who it is, please tell them to stop. You know, it's, it's a very informal way of leveling. We know he's the boss, but he doesn't come around like I'm the boss. He participates the same way we participate, which helps to build that collaboration. It helps to build the communication and really the sense of family. So just in terms of close, these blocks are things that we touched about, touched on at a very high level. I think at the top it talks about culture matters. So although that that's at the top, I really think that's really the foundation too. The culture is what was the you know the solid rock bed that we were allowed to root ourselves in who we wanted to be as a company and from that stems the idea of this growth mindset growth mindset pretty much embedded because we know we always have more to learn there are different things that we can do with the software what's going to be the next cutting edge thing that will help corporations nonprofits hospitals families around um, protected species around the world help them to see another day. With that, there are certain skills that we're going to need to refresh, skills that we're going to need to retain, and skills we're going to need to learn that we don't even know what they are today. But two months from now, there might be something new. So that, that quest for learning for all, building skill, commitment and engagement, it's about all in. How do we create an environment for everybody to feel like they're all in? Which will lead to that commitment and engagement that then leads us to building our talent now and into the future, which then really closes the container on focusing on that culture and keeping the culture strong.